But I'm going to speak to you about, last week we put it out there, the challenge, can God change my life? And immediately people will say yes, because the reference point is God is almighty. That is our reference point. God can do anything. But do you know that God needs your will to do something? God can do anything in your life, but if your will resists Him, or your will is stubborn, or if you harden your heart, whatever God wants to do in your life, He cannot. He cannot. So we ask this question, can God make a difference in our lives? And we say yes, because it's true. The fact sometimes is we miss God, but the truth is God can and will make a difference in your life. So this morning, I'm going to go out of that reference point and say, yes, God changed you. He did change you. And I'm going to share a scripture this morning that kept me on the road for the last 27 years. Because being a Christian, being a pastor, there's a lot of highs and a lot of lows. There's great joy and great sorrow. You, you stand by the birth of a baby and you stand by the death of a mother. You get people coming into your life and people leaving your life. And, and this scripture I'm going to share is going to bring a revelation to you that's going to, it's going to if you stay in this, in this understanding of the scripture, I want to tell you, you will never backslide. You'll never grow weary. You might be emotional now and then. But you will keep on serving God. You'll understand your reference point. That is what I want to reset this morning. Your relationship with God. Where does it start? How does it function? How does it look in the natural? To say, I gave my life to Christ. What does it mean? So read the scripture with me. It's in Acts 17, verse 28. Acts 17 verse 28, and this is not, although it's in Acts, it's not Paul that wrote it, it's not Luke that wrote it, it was Paul, this was written down on a statue, the unknown God, and this was the message on this unknown God, and, and Paul referenced to this when he invaded those people's space, the Gentile space, and said, you say this about this God, let me tell you who this God is, and it says here, in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. In him we live. I want you to just sit still and just grab that word live. What, what does living in Christ look like to you and to me? When you go to the Bible, we see guys like David that, that had this type of form and fashion relationship with God and he sinned but he was a man of God's own heart and, and we look at the disciples like Peter that he lived with Jesus but he was, sometimes he cut the guy's ears off and he said Lord no you will not be do that you will not die Lord you're going to stay you're going to uh, you know you're going to redeem us from the Roman Empire and so there's a live space that that I'm going to challenge you with this morning but I want to tell you something from the cross point of view in Christ Jesus the day you receive Jesus Christ you got born again? This scripture is your reference point. I'm dead to self, I live in Christ. Not I live for Christ, I live in Christ. Because many times when we say I live for Christ, it feels like it's something I need to achieve. It's a performance-based lifestyle. It is, it is like something is blocking me and I resist, I have to fight. But when you live in Christ, there's no fight. You understand whatever the world throws at you, you can handle it. Because you're better at life. Because Christ is in you and you are in Christ. In Him we live, have our being and move. It sounds great, but what does it mean? Listen to the Passion, the passion Translated. It says here, it is through Him. Say through Him. So there's a Jesus is the door. It says it is through Him. No other way. The Bible says no other way by the other name can a man be saved but Jesus Christ. Jesus is the door. He's the Alpha and Omega. It's the beginning and the end. So it's through Him we live in this space. We live and function and have our identity just as your own poets have said. Our lineage come from Him. So he asked the question, who is Jesus to you? What will you say to find Jesus? Because through Him you live. And what change do you need to make this morning? in your understanding about the gospel of Christ Jesus, to have this reference point 
that my life on earth is a life in Jesus. My move on earth, whatever I do on earth, it's in Jesus. My identity is in Jesus. Not my sin, not my mistakes, no, do not define me. It is in Jesus. Amen? It's a description. And, and many times when we speak about these words, you will say to me, Martin, I've not experienced that. Or you can have this, this revelation and say, wow. But by interpretation and application, you've missed this journey within Jesus. Let me give you a test, what I mean by this. If Jesus speaks to you through the Holy Spirit about your life, the way you live, the way you live, the way you function in your space, what will be your first reaction? Will you reject it? Will you resist it? Or will you repent? And say, Jesus, I've, I've, I understand now. I've been living this. This is my reference point that it's you, Jesus, that saved me and, and you're taking me to heaven. But this in-between space from salvation to heaven where life happens, I missed it. See, that's your test. When truth comes your way, you either reject it or resist it or embrace it with repentance. And say, sorry, I made a mistake. So this is going to be your challenge this morning. So let's look at the first one, live. The original Greek text this word live, if you, if you read it in the original Greek text, it is such a vast word. It's a powerful word. It's an amazing word. It's not, it's not a word that says I wake up in the morning and I go to work and pay my bills and have some friends and have a hobby and I live. It's not where you live. As we ask people, where do you live? If you understand the Greek context of this in him we live, your whole life will change. When you get depressed, you will speak like David to your soul and say, so why are you depressed? Rise up and serve God. This is a counterweight for the life you live in. Let me give you some words of this Greek context. It says, to have a true life worthy of the name. A true life, not an authentic life, not a make-believe life. Not of a life that you try to be or, or something. It's not, out, it's not an external experience. It's an internal revelation. Listen to it. Blessed. Enjoy real life. Living water. To be full of vigor. To be fresh. Strong and efficient. Active and powerful. So when we say we live in Christ, it means you're active, you're powerful, you have vigor. Life should not be depressing. Your circumstances should not get you down and into a corner where you feel like, where's God? No, God is inside of you. Jesus is inside. In Him we live. You see, we find many times, if you don't have this reference point, when circumstances come against you, it pushes you out of that space that you're in Christ. And you feel like God has forsaken you. No one cares about you. And Jesus, why don't you speak up or help me? He says you have the life. John 10 calls it this way. You have life and life abundantly because I'm your good shepherd. So I want to challenge you. When you say I live in Christ Jesus, this should be the attributes of your life. Not be a sulky believer, not be a rebellious believer, not be a, a, a one that fights and strife and, and break people down, but have vigor in your life. Have a joy in your life. Be strong, be efficient, be powerful, be active. Because all these traits belongs to you if you're in Christ Jesus. So you can say, not one day, you can say, I have right now. This life in Christ that is powerful, that is active. I have the vigor of the Lord in me. I can resist, I can stand, I can push back. Because that is what God, through Christ Jesus, is in your life. But many times we have this walk with Christ and say, one day. I might fall down now, but if I just read a bit more scripture, maybe just go to the Bible school, just pray a bit more, you know, then I will be able to stand. No, you are sitting with Christ in everything places. You stand in this revelation that I live in Christ and Christ lives in me. And whatever the, ever the enemy or the world throws at me, I can overcome it because I live this life to the fullness. This life has peace. This life has joy. This life has prosperity. It's not something out there. It's something in you. 
Many times people have this reference point. It's just out of reach. Maybe if I push a bit harder, serve God maybe with more, more of my strength. No. We love God as God loves us. We don't love God with the reference point of the Old Testament with all your might and all your strength and all, all your will. No. We love God as God loves us. Takes away the reference point. And the reference point is not my strength, my hope, my, my energy. The reference point, God loves me. Therefore, I love him. But I want you to think about this. In him. Because no other words more perfectly expresses your constant dependence on God. When you say you're living God, you're constant dependent on God. What do you want to do in my life? God, what is this? There's this communication, this prayer life continually because you know God is within you. This is what the Bible says. Luke 20, 38 says, Jesus says, now, now he is not God of the dead, but of the living. Listen to this. John 15. And I want you to see this in him we live. And how many times this word abide, stick, glued together, oneness is used to illustrate our relationship with Jesus Christ. The vine and the branches. Remain in me as I also remain in you. It's not remain in me, you know, if I remain in you. I'm in this game. I want to tell you Jesus is in your life. You are born again. He is there. He committed 100% on the cross for us. And he says, remain in me as I remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I'm the vine, you the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. See, that's what I love about the gospel of Christ. It's not, it's not like you can do nothing, you can do nothing. It says remain in me, have fellowship with me, rejoice in this life we have together. Because if this is your reference point, you can do all things. But if the enemy gets you out of that space that you do not understand that Jesus is your reference point, then Jesus just want to help you and say, a part of, from me you can do nothing. Because you must understand, I'm in you and you in me. And whatever flows through me, flows through you. See, the roots and the fruits has the same DNA fed by the sap in the tree. If Jesus is your salvation and the fruit of joy is in your life, that same substance that, that raised Jesus from the dead called the Holy Spirit is in your life. The Bible says, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. It is a powerful understanding to know that I live in God and God lives in me. By Jesus Christ. The next one is this word move. Move is a verb. Move is an action word. So when the, the Bible, when, when, when this reference was made in Acts to a Christian believer, it says, what are you going to do with this life in Christ? If your reference point is only to make heaven one day, you're missing it. What are you going to do on earth? What is your mission in life? How many have someone or has someone ever asked you, what is your mission in life? Or maybe when you act out, or they look at someone and say, that guy's on a mission. Sometimes they have self-destruction. Sometimes they say that he's on a mission of finding himself. Especially when a guy's 45, 50 years old and he buys a, he buys a convertible Ferrari, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but you need to understand, when, when the Bible says, in him we live and move, there's a mission connected with it. In plain Afrikaans, English, what are you doing for Jesus and Father? What is your mission in life? Poor are we if our mission is to abstain from sin, be a good Christian, so we don't, make, don't miss heaven. If your reference point is salvation in heaven, we are poor because there's a purpose in your life. God redeemed you, saved you through Jesus Christ because there's a purpose, family. Say purpose. Yes, you need to believe this. Jesus will, will move in your life, free your life so that you will accomplish that mission he has for you. He will provide anything you need for this movement. 
God wants you to move. And it's not only on a Sunday when you come from your house to move to church. It's a willingness of understanding the movement in Christ. If I say this morning to you, uh, this group of people, will you please move to this side? And this side, will you please move to this side? Not everybody's going to respond with the same attitude. Some people ask, but why? Why? Why must I stand up now? I didn't sign up for this. Some people will sit and think, until someone else in his row stands up and he feels like pressure now to perform this obedience act. And you go there and you sit there and there's going to sit there. But in your heart, you see, move is a hard attitude. Jesus looked at his disciples and said, come and follow me and I will make you a fish of men. He defined their hearts. The word says they left everything and the why of life became better. Their why was fishermen. I need to survive. Now Jesus says, I will make you. I will cause a movement. You will follow me and I will work through you. And it defines your heart. Is your heart soft enough? If you trust me as your pastor and you love the house, and I say, please, well, guys, will you please just stand up and just, just join this group and this group? It will be easy for you. And exactly the same. If Jesus has your heart and you live in this understanding that he's my reference point and he asks you to move in a certain space, move in pick and pay to pray for someone, move in your world, Tomorrow at work, when the Holy Spirit prompts you to pray for your boss or make him a cup of coffee, you will not resist it. Because there's a movement on the inside of you. But the question is, do you know what your mission is? Because in the kingdom, there's a lot of opportunity to serve. Just think of your opportunity to serve today when you leave church, maybe in your, in your household. Maybe you've got unsafe family members. Maybe you can just phone them and say, listen, what are you doing this afternoon at five? Let's have coffee. And you just invade that space of the good news of Jesus Christ. You don't have to tell them they're wrong. They know they're wrong. You don't have to tell them they're lost. They know. Because each one of us has a moral conscience between good and evil. But the gospel is not about good people, bad people. It's about people being found in Christ and people lost without Christ. So what is your mission? What will you say yes to at your workspace tomorrow? I know that each one of us are different. Some people are a bit more reserved than others. But each one of us has gifts and talents. God has formed you that way. Can I be honest with you? When God formed you in your mother's womb, He didn't only give you the right nose and the eyes and the legs and the toes. He gave you abilities as well. There's gifts locked up in you. There's talents that needs to be developed that God has placed as a seed form in your life, in your mother's womb. You start as a seed and you will continue having seed in your life. But you need to understand how does it work. You need to apply that seed to build the kingdom of God. So the easy way to discover your talents and your gifts is just ask someone that knows you. Ask your best friend. Go to that friend and say, listen, do, 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 I, do I look like a, a person that's always full of joy? You know? Or do I have this, this gift to motivate people to, to serve God? And your friend will be honest with you. Maybe you feel like you, you want, one day you want to you know, be a worship leader and, and you say to someone, listen man, one day I'm going to sing. And your friend will look you in the eyes and say, please, but not sing. <laughs> Rather tap dance, but not sing. If you don't know your gifting, your talent, start with the reference point, friend, buddy, what am I good at? Help me. I want to do something great for God, but I feel so insecure because many times I've done this and it didn't, didn't work out. It flopped. So just maybe you were out of your gifting. If you're married, it's much easier. Because no someone greater as an honest person as your spouse. My wife many times told me, said, baby, I'm going to do this. And she says, please don't. Uh, It's a good idea. You're you're passionate about God, but it's not your gifting. It's not your gifting. Honesty is liberating. If you know what your gifting is and God says move, you will move. Let's let, let just do this this way. And I'm just going to use the example of evangelism. 
If I say to the guys after church this afternoon, I meet you guys at the Glen at one o'clock and we're going to evangelize in the parking area. Hoo-ha! Not a lot of people is going to go hoo-ha. Because we've defined it as difficult. We defined our gifts in the difficult ratio. That this is easy, maybe I can do this. Oh, this is too difficult. But when God calls you, He calls you. He doesn't define difficulties. Because in Him all things are possible. If He has your heart, He has your hands. If He has your heart, He has your feet. He has your body. So I want to tell you, in your work life tomorrow, function in that space. Maybe you can ask just yourself, what do I love to do? Maybe you love gardening and you've got green fingers. Go to your neighbor's house. Say, listen, neighbor, I've seen you water your garden, but that plants are not going to make it. It's not the right type of plant in the right place. Can I fix your garden? Why? Because this will validate you. It will, it will bring joy to your heart. Seeing you functioning in your gift. If you're hospitable, invite people to your house. You don't have to buy fillet for them. Give them Mari biscuits and, and some, some stuffies, you know. But exercise that gift, family, because each one of us has something to offer in this movement. You need to discover that source. But what is your mission right now? What you're applying your time to, is it of God or is it your own life's dreams? Because you can never have a dream without God. It was God that gave Joseph a dream. Just think about this. If Joseph didn't have a dream from God, and Joseph one night says, well, listen, I've got this dream, you know, and I'm going to be uh, second in command of Egypt, and, and he ends up in a pit. That's not a dream, that's a nightmare. And then you, end, you, know, you get up into this guy's house, and his wife says, rape, rape, and then you enter into the prison. I will give up on a dream like that. You need to filter your dreams for the dream that God has for your life. God's dream for David was to be a, the king of Israel. And there was a soul that didn't like him. And he had brothers that despised him. And he had a father that didn't love him as he's supposed to be. But the dream kept alive because God had a dream for David. But David needed to, to tap into that purpose for my life. For his brothers, he was a shepherd boy, but for God, he was a king. That's the movement I'm talking about. What is in your way right now for fulfilling that purpose for God in your life? For fulfilling that mission, maybe you say, well, um, I'm a bit shy, or maybe you say, uh, I, don't, I don't have someone to do it with. That's why Jesus said his disciples do too. It's always easier going to. That's what the Bible says, the principle of two. Two is better than one. When one falls, other one can tell him up. If one gets attacked, Two can resist. So I want to challenge you. Listen to this word in the Greek word, the word move. It says to stir up. In him we live. In him we move. We are stirred up in him. We cause to go. We are set in motion. There's a difference between riding a car and starting a car. You can look at that Porsche, a dream car of yours, and you can go to the, the showroom and you can start it and you can ref it. But just think about driving it. And many Christians have this, have this illusion of being this Christian, powerful, used by God, but we live a showcase life. We rev the motor of our driving it. That's what I'm talking about this morning. Be there. Set yourself in motion. Let Christ stir you up. Because in that space, nothing is impossible. Because you believe you are in Him. This is what the Bible says according to this move. Your strength that is Psalm 68, verse 35. Your strength, both physical and spiritual, comes from God. Your strength, both physical and spiritual, comes from God. Listen to this, 1 John 4, 8. It's in the message, God is love. My beloved friends, let us continue to love each other since love comes from God. Move. When you understand you in this in the space where God wants to move you, to influence your world, to love people as He loves people, the reference point is the love of God. I love people because God loves me. 
God didn't value me before he saved me. I was a sinner, rotten, useless, and he saved me. How much more now that I'm a child of God can I have that lifestyle to someone else? Everyone who, love, who loves is born of God. Expresses a relationship with him. The person who refused to love does not know the first thing about God because God is love. So you can't know him that is God if you do not love. This is how God showed his love towards us. God sent his only son into this world so that we might live through him. This is the kind of love we are talking about. Not that we once upon a time loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice, listen to this, to clear away our sins and the damage they have done in our relationship towards God. What a, what a, what a powerful statement. That nothing can separate us from the love of God. So when God asks you to move, move in that reference point. I live in him and this mandate to move is my purpose. It's God's mission for my life. It's not my own thing. God is just prompting me by the Holy Spirit to move in that space. The last one, being. In him we live and move and have our being. That word being is identity. Identity. A definition of identity, I want to read it for you. It says it's the condition or a character as the one who a person is, the qualities and belief that distinguish or identify a person. So identification is revealed in my belief system, in my character. That's why you will never be defined as a Christian by your mistakes. You are defined by relationship. You're a son and a daughter of God. That is so important. Identity is righteousness. Righteousness means that from God's side, you are righteous as if you've never sinned. Sanctification is our walk in relationship, cleaning ourselves up by the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit. But does not affect your righteousness. Righteousness is a stand. It's identity. Like your kid. Maybe your son is naughty. When you ask him, who's your father? He will say, well, Manny is my father. Well, you don't, you don't act like your dad. Well, Manny is my father. What is his reference with? His birthright. What is your birthright? Born again. Righteous because of Jesus Christ. When Jesus died on a cross and you embraced that sacrifice, he became your substitute. Went hell to hell in your place. Rose out of hell. Took the keys. Are seated in every, right, in, in every place at right hand of God, and you are seated with Him. So it's that qualities, beliefs, that distinguish or identify a person. What does it mean if I live in Christ and I move and have my being? That means the character of Jesus is part of my character. If He lives in me and I live in Him, surely, family, come on, oh, some of His qualities or His beliefs needs to be functioning in my life. It needs to. Or else we cannot have this reference point that I live in Jesus and Jesus lives in me. We cannot have this reference point that the same sap that, that feeds the roots out of the ground and the fruits on the tree is the same sap. And that's why it's so much difficult. That's why this, this verse, I visit this verse quite often. When I go through tough times as a pastor, when I want to get discouraged and lose heart, I move in that space. Jesus in you I live. And I have my mission, you've called me, Lord. And my identity is forged in who you are. Because I, have, I hide under his wings. I live in that shadow of the Almighty. I say of my Lord, he's my rock, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. That is my reference point. So your identity is set. Your identity is clear in heavenlies. But not because what we have done is what Jesus did, but you embraced you need to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. In Christ, your blessing is secure. In Him, you have this victory. Let me read this to you. Know this, you are God's creation. And as a believer, you've been redeemed and sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ. But yes, the, yes, the challenge. I understand this, that I've been redeemed. But can I ask you your existence here on earth? Do you live 
for your own existence? Do you use your gifts and your talents to, to enrich yourself or to make a space for yourself or a name for yourself? Or is it always the reference point to worship God, to glorify Him? Can I tell you, your world longs for someone that has the ability to confess Jesus Christ as Lord of all. Your world longs for someone to be light and salt. To have this identity that it's Christ in me. And I'm in Christ. If you have this resting point, there will always be a reminder. There will always be a red light. Whenever you choose something, whenever you make a decision, that red, that, that red light will come on. That alarm will go, bam, bam, bam. Why are you doing this? What you're doing, is it reflecting the light and soul that God called you to be? Or is it reflecting yourself? There's always a counterweight. But if you understand this moral conscience that I've been born again in Christ, He's my identity, whenever I make a decision, whenever I make a choice, I ask myself, what does my choice reflect about the kingdom? When I'm upset with people, and I want to say something or do something, I ask, my choice, what will it reflect of the kingdom of God? Are you guys okay? You look at me if I speak Chinese this morning. I know these Portuguese people, I can understand that they, they're a bit fresh because they've been away for a month and then Lynn and Tony is flying out the 17th to Portugal for a month. Uh, these Portuguese people, I don't know, they need to become born again. But that's my, that's my lifestyle. Whenever I do something, want to act on something, react on something, the first Achilles heel I have, the red light, is, is it going to reflect Bad on the kingdom of God and good on me? Because I'm a servant. You are a servant of the king. Jesus is your Lord and Savior. And therefore, God wants you to use this reference point of identity in him we live, move and have our being to influence your world, family. You are God created for a purpose. Amen? You are God created for a purpose. And when you understand this, you will choose to live your life more intentionally. You will choose to make choices that will, that will move you into that space and bring glory to God. You won't just live by accident. You won't just live by emotions. You won't just live by choices. You will live by godly impact in your life. It will help you to put your existence in perspective. When you ask this question, why am I living? You will find us in this verse. In Him we live and move and have our being. My identity is in Him. And because He has a mission for my life, it gives validation to my existence. Why do I exist? If that's a validation of my existence, your family will always celebrate your life. Your world will celebrate your life. They will not tolerate you. Many times in our world, when we live with other people, they tolerate us because we're unwise. We don't have wisdom. We don't understand the purpose of the kingdom. But when we understand that God calls us to love them as He loves, because God says it's always mercy before truth. It's always grace before truth. And if you love your world, they will celebrate your life. They will celebrate your personality. They will even celebrate the word you speak to them in correction. Because there's a spirit behind it. And that's the spirit of Christ. That spirit of wisdom. That will bring perspective in your life. And that will make your priorities. That list of priorities every day will be to honor God. And to value people on a daily basis. What honor it is, if you want to think about your life or my life, what a privilege it is to be under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. You know, want to know what it means? If we are under the Lordship and we live in Him, that means we are His feet. We are His hands. We are the light of this world. We are to invite other people to experience the same life that we live. Man, I love to be a Christian. 
It doesn't matter where we go, I will invite people. If it's in food lovers, if it's in the doctor's office, it's, I'm, I'm now busy with a cycle. I've got a problem with my right eye. Uh, I receive an injection every, every month, end of the month, or some bubble of something burst behind my eye. In the beginning, I just greeted her, morning. The next month, I said, what is your name? Lindy. I said, Lindy, thank you for serving me with such excellence. Thank you for phoning me always with an awesome voice. Pastor Martin, it's time for your date. And because I understand how God loves people, Lindy was in church a few times already, and she stays in Daleside. Because she cannot hide Christ from people. You cannot hide Him. You cannot put Him in a box. He comes through your eyes. He comes through your, through your mouth. He comes through your hand. You find yourself in that space that you want to pray for people. and Just invite them to this life that you have in Christ so that they can enjoy this relationship. In Him, we live, move, and have our being. I, I, I just want to give you just a minute just to close your eyes and and just, just go through your life about this principle and this scripture in Acts 17 verse 28. Ask yourself this morning, do I really live? Do I really understand this concept of a life in Christ that's abundant, that's exuberant, that's, that's, that's full of vicar, strength and purpose? Do I understand what it means to be moved by the Spirit in purpose? That, I, that I, my life matters, that I have a mission. Have a being, identity. Whatever flows in Jesus needs to be flowed through my life into my world. And if you find that the space where you lack, the Bible says in Matthew 7, 7, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. So just in that space right now, speak to the Lord. Say, Lord, here I am. I've been born again. But my life does not reflect this kingdom living in my world. I need this from you, Lord. Help me. Help me. Because Jesus came to seek and to save the lost, He will help you. He came to destroy the works of the enemy. He will help you. Jesus, thank you for speaking to us right now.